so today we're going to try to make a fruit battery. So we're first going to take our light bulb and make sure that it lights, which it does, nice and bright, with just a regular battery. So now we're going to try to use fruit. Obviously, if you just stick this in here, that's not going to work. So we're going to use copper and zinc and some fruit. So we're going to see if we can make this work. The first thing we got to do is you kind of have to bruise the fruit. So I'm actively trying to bruise and soften the fruit. So even if you have an orange or a lemon, you're going to want to bruise those as well and just soften up the inside. Like you can see here now I've got this so it's all like gushy on the inside. It's kind of gross to do, but you want there to be some juice basically on the inside like so that we can have the reaction and the chemicals moving through. Here's something on this table. It's kind of grody. I don't know what it is. Anyways, we'll just keep going. We're not going to eat this fruit after. So this is nice and you can see nice and squishy in here. So we're going to use that. Got to mush up this one. Sorry that it's probably super loud on the video. Okay, so this one's, I think, possibly even squishier. So that is going to be where we're going to put our electrodes. We're going to use our alligator clips. In between. And we're going to see how it works. Sorry, I have to grab one more. So I'm going to take my copper and these are going to become our electrodes and I'm going to just stick it in here. And then I'm going to take my zinc and what I did was before we started this, I took some steel wool and I just rubbed the ends. Actually, that could be what was on the table. Um, just so they're nice and clean. Now, when you put these in, you don't want them to touch on the inside. Okay. So I'm going to take my two um, alligator clip wires here and I'm going to hold it near our light bulb. Ta-da! Nothing happened. So the first thing we're going to check is that we did it the right way. So we'll turn it around because you know by now hopefully that LEDs only run one way. And I really honestly wasn't expecting it to light with just one. So we're going to take that off. We're going to move this one over. And we're going to grab the next one. I'm going to get two more electrodes, which I just need to quickly clean off. So we're just going to rub off. When we do this, you kind of get a little bit of oxidization on the ends. And so there's nothing wrong with it. It won't hurt anything, but it does sometimes prevent the reaction from happening, which would not make this easy. So we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna have this connected. So you're always gonna wanna connect your zinc to your copper or your copper to your zinc. And we'll do a little quick cleaning of the end of this one. I'm gonna stick that in there. Look at my juicy. Okay, let's see if this works. Now, if this doesn't work, I've run out of apples for today. So we'll have to add in some other stuff. So as much as I wanted that to work, no. So let's turn this around. And still, no. So as much as we want these things to happen sometimes, it just doesn't. So now I'm gonna to need to get some other things to put in. Okay, so we're gonna add in some more parts to our system and see if we can get that light bulb to light up. We're gonna add in our, this is the really gross looking lemonade. Thank goodness I did the lid. This is a really disgusting lime juice that's been in the lab for who knows how long. 
So we're grabbing out the next set of electrodes, doing a quick clean. Doing a quick clean on this side. We're gonna need to make sure that our electrode is long enough to go into the solution, but then still not have it touch the other. So we'll put it over here. There. So let's see. Light bulb. Light bulb. Come on, light bulb. And we're still not at three volts. So the other thing about these light bulbs is they do require three volts to start. So now we have to figure out what's going on. So let's try getting one of our multimeters. Let's try that. So we're just gonna attach these. I've put it at our voltage here. 20 volts over here. So this is saying with two um, lemon, that it's going to be not even at one volt yet, which is not really super helpful at all. So let's try another one. And we'll see how much it goes up by. So as you can see over here, I know that this is, I have to keep them balanced. So this is at least getting up to 1.9, which makes more sense. I had it hooked up wrong. So I had two zincs hooked together. That didn't make any sense. So it looks like we need at least one more. So if you look at the end of this one, this is how eaten up it can be if you keep doing this with them. So this is just actually the chemical reaction to make the battery work. It's kind of cool. So with five, we actually can light the light bulb, look. Amazing. Okay, and if we wanted to know the voltage, we could use our multimeter and attach that. Again, you won't have a multimeter at home, no one expects you to have it. But we're up at the four, 3.7. So I wonder if we took this one out and instead connected this. So now there would only be four connected. This one is no longer connected. Although it's still connected here. If we did that, so if we only had four connected, we still have over three volts. So let's see if we can light the battery or light the light bulb with just four. So it's lit with four. What would happen if we did it with 
three. So if you notice, it's still lit on the three here, really carefully. So it's lit, but it's not lit as much. So it's quite dim. So to add in that fourth here, makes it quite a bit brighter. And then I wonder if with two, two there's just not enough voltage. So you have to have that third one to have any light. And then to brighten it beyond that, you can add in the fourth or the fifth one to get it much brighter, okay? Okay, we have the potato connected to the plum, connected to the apple, connected to the banana, connected to the orange, connected to the lemon. And then, success.